So probably another thing to, to think about in terms of our progression is sparring and where that comes into the system. Um, there's a, a fair bit of sort of an opinion floating around that if you're not doing some sort of sparring, I, I've read different, you know, some people say if you're not sparring in the first class, walk out because it's crap. Other people are saying, oh, if you're not sparring within the first month or sparring within the first three months or whatever, you, you, you shouldn't hang around. To my mind, that's really, really short-sighted, to say the least. Uh, to my mind, that, su that hints or suggests the person making that assumption uh, has never trained and drilled their techniques to a really high level of refinement and uh, probably probably can't actually put their Wing Chun into practice. And what I mean by that is, you know, if he's going to attack, I'm going to do Wing Chun. Keep going. We're going to do some sparring. My Wing Chun starts to look like that. But it's all just concepts, so I can do whatever the hell I like. That's where I think that kind of stuff leads to. So, uh, for us, the way we do it, sparring is uh, a crucial part of learning a martial art. It's a crucial part of being able to apply it. In fact, my Sifu has said that sparring is not enough. You've actually got to go get in fights. Now, being Canberra in the 2000s, Sifu never encouraged us to do that because uh, you're going to have all sorts of problems with the cops and whatnot. And, It'd be completely irresponsible of the CFU to go and encourage their students to do that. And doing it in class, uh, you know, we've all got to have, well, if you're sane, you have some sort of insurance, and quite often the insurance isn't going to cover that kind of year. And uh, if someone gets hurt in your school with that sort of thing going on, and they want to sue you, you're probably in some serious trouble. So, uh, you can't really do it these days, to my mind. The best you could do is go get in a ring with someone or some sort of open tournament or whatever. But uh, getting into actual fights is probably, uh, and fighting good people too, is how you do it in the olden days. And certainly my city boom was uh, phenomenal for that sort of stuff. But uh, the best we can usually do these days is some sort of sparring. So we do like to do sparring because it's kind of fun and uh, we don't really do contact sparring although we might hit each other and contact like that but these guys have got some pretty decent control and it's very rare that anyone would end up with a, a hurt uh, mouth or whatever but it sometimes does happen but you know, they're pretty tough. But um, the sparring for us comes in when a person who wants to do it has the tools to use, and those tools are sharp enough that they can actually use them. What you see is, which you know, one of the, the downsides that you see is when people spar too soon, they haven't got their tools really sharp, they're not ingrained, and what starts to happen looks a bit like what we did earlier, where you know, I might pull the first one off, he's better than me, but he manages to catch it, so I'm sort of not really doing Wing Chun, I'm just sort of covering or whatever. And I've seen this happen. Usually younger teenage boys and early 20s, they just want to do lots of sparring. and They get pretty good pretty quick, so they'll, you know, punch will come and they'll have pretty good reaction time, but what pops out will be a bit not as tight as it ought to be. As long as the person they're sparring with can't exploit that, you know, that's pretty good. But, uh, Come up A, come up against someone who can exploit it, like this one, you're done. No, you're right. And uh, the second thing is, every time I've seen this happen, where people do a lot of sparring really quick, they plateau off fairly low at a low standard. And uh, they then either have to just live with what they've got, or go back, start again, and drill their techniques more, drill their foundations more and uh, catch up, hope they can catch up again. So for us, sparring is a really important part of it and essential. And uh, 
the more senior guys do a, a fair bit of it. So my, it's not so much in, in training because all they want to do is foundation training. But uh, when we're at home or training together, sometimes we do a, bit, a fair bit of sparring. But uh, in the class, the other reason we don't have a lot of sparring videos in our, our uh, YouTube channel so far is because most of the students I've got are, are at a, a low enough level that sparring's not a worthwhile exercise for them yet. So uh, it is something that they'll do a lot of eventually, but they're still there's much more important things for them to work on at the moment. So that's where sparring fits in in terms of our progression of learning. You learn your foundations, you drill your techniques so you've got the tools to use in sparring. And then once you've got those tools, which includes chi cell, then you can start doing sparring to your heart's content if you like. And the standard that you get at the outer end, the, the outer end of that is uh, of a much, much, much higher level than if you do sparring from the very beginning. Mainly because, you know, people, they don't have the tools to, to deal with what's coming on and they start doing stuff that completely complicates. You know, if Mick throws a punch like that, I don't want to be pulling that off. I want to be coming in with something a bit more convincing, you know, whatever, whatever it is that I do. If I don't, I have the tools or they're sharp enough, it's going to look a little funky. My, uh, my stance is already compromised. If I could call that a bong cell, it's on the wrong arm, and uh, you know he's got that coming. I can't really reach him from here because I've backed off. So if you don't really have the tools, and you don't know, or if you've got the tools but they're not sharp enough that you can actually do something with them, then you start uh, muddling through. And that muddling through, if you do enough sparring, turns into how you do your winching and uh, you'll have muddling through Wing Chun the whole time of your life until you go back and do it all over again. So that's how sparring fits into our progression, I guess. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Cool.